the ground, this like stippling technique. And then there's like gradations, is it sand or um, something that like has picked up and really piled up, up to the bed of this abandoned room. Hi everyone! So today I wanted to start a new series. I don't know, this might be an on and off series of graphic novels and I selected three today. They're all from different storylines but, but the thing that threads them all together is that they are illustration, the genre of graphic novels. First one that I wanted to share is titled The Cage by Martin Vaughn James. And then I'm also going to be talking about Shortcomings by Adrian Toman. And then also the third one, I moved to Los Angeles to work in animation, which is by Natalie Norigat. Let's get started. I'm really excited to share because this is definitely different. It's going to be more loose and I don't really have that much planned. I just wanted to go through some of the artwork and... Um, just how the storylines play out. We're gonna start off with The Cage. It was written in 1975, and this was actually what a lot of people deem as the first pioneering graphic novel before the genre itself was consolidated. Martin Vaughn James, who's the author of this piece, he's Canadian. Very interesting if we look at the formatting of this piece. It's not what you would expect out of the graphic novel today, which is a lot of the text may be moving forward through characters and through text bubbles. But instead, in the cage, there's no single voice. It's always just a omniscient narrator, which I actually will um, go into in a bit as we look at the artwork. So the first excerpt I wanted to share is one of the opening scenes in the graphic novel, and it starts... The cage stood as before, and that's essentially the omniscient narrator who's setting the scene. We see there's barbed wire and a lot of line work. An illustrator himself was drawing this. He was definitely paying attention to perspective and space, and a lot of his compositions use this element of the vanishing point in the horizon to kind of symbolize, I think, abandonment. We don't really see what's in the distance because Maybe we don't know. The future doesn't exist. Um, time seems to be frozen. I think this novel does a really good job in like when keeping the reader interested while staying in ambiguity the entire time. I think what I wanted to pull off here is the point of view. The point of view that we're placed in is from down below and we're looking up at what looks like, you know, this debris that is falling or is it floating? We don't know. And then this piece, I wanted to kind of focus in on the texture. So, right, when I mentioned line work, obviously there's still a lot of line work here when he's drawing interior spaces, but it's really cool to see on the ground this, like, stippling technique. And then there's, like, gradations. Is it sand or um, something that, like, has picked up and really piled up, up to the bed of this abandoned room. It's really interesting because there's no actual living presence, but we can sense for ourselves that there has been living debris that's still existing. The author himself puts it really nicely in the premise. He says, The cage is its final spectacular presentation, its last slideshow on Earth. So it is very dystopian as you might be able to tell, as the last light show on Earth, it's basically the remnants of civilization. And now we're going to transition to a more contemporary graphic novel, Shortcomings by Adrian Tomlin. This one is very funny, very uh, also like, it's a, it's a dark humor. This man who I believe we can place him around 30 and 40 years old, he's in this like, very much um, spiraling relationship with his significant other. He is Japanese-American, so kind of delving into race, cultural 
race, culture, identity, and masculinity all at the same time. Um, this is one of the first scenes in this novel. I don't know if I want to read it all for you guys. Here's a screenshot of the actual excerpt. So I guess, yeah, let's read it together. It'll be fun. Everyone knows it's garbage. Oh, oh, so the premise of this is that they are just coming home from a Asian American film festival. The main character, Ben, he is coming back home with his girlfriend, Miko. She enjoyed the film festival, but Ben denies that it was good. He says, because everyone knows it's garbage, but they'd clap for it anyway because it was made by some Chinese girl from Oakland. I mean, why does everything have to be some big statement about race? Don't any of these people just want to make a good, a movie that's good? God, you drive me crazy sometimes. It's always like you're ashamed to be Asian. What? After a movie like that, I'm ashamed to be human. Okay, let's just drop it. Sigh. I was in such a good mood. Yeah, so I mean, this is basically the downfall of the relationship, or the start of the downfall. And it's, you know, talking about identity, politics, like, can, do we have to like something just because um, these people who don't usually get the representation that they deserve are put in a spotlight? Or can we truly, you know, look at it from a critical lens, despite the fact that it's so rare for representation to show up? This next clip, I think, is just one of my favorites in terms of the time lapse. It does such a good job in showing a movement or showing the passing of time without words. I think this is where graphic novels really show their best assets. He's at the airport and this is just like one of these bird's eye cameras I think. Um, you can imagine him going from left to right and then he is shown to have some coffee and drinks it. it looks like he's not satisfied. That's actually all that I wanted to share from Shortcomings. As you can tell, it's mainly about Ben, but he's kind of reconciling with a lot of his own identity as a straight cis male living in this 20th century world um, and as a minority. And then through that, I think he starts to really think about masculinity and how masculinity plays a role in his confidence. Yeah. Graph novel that I wanted to look at is titled I Moved to Los Angeles to Work in Animation. This is very much an autobiographical plus like advice driven book, which is really interesting because I mean, I was personally just drawn to the cover. It's very much like Instagram aesthetics. <laughs> I'm surprised there's a lot of good advice for not only just animators, but creatives in general, freelancers anyone who wants to quote-unquote make it. So I'm just going to share some of, the, some of the excerpts that I found really insightful. I'm not going to read them, but I will. you can pause the screen and look at them yourself. A really relatable content and I just learned a lot. I mean, it's also very enjoyable to look at. I think the one thing that I would say is it's definitely overwhelming in terms of text, but I think it's because it's, you know, more of like an infographic almost. Thank you for watching this first series of graphic novels, and one thing I also really enjoy is how short and sweet these texts are. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, peace out.